Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to conditionally modify UI elements in Swift UI. We're going to use a cool looking button that we created in another tutorial, which is of course linked in the video description below. Our goal today is to create a custom toggle button that looks different in its active and inactive state. Therefore, I'm going to show you various approaches and also how to elegantly solve this problem with your own generic and conditional view modifier function. And if you are just getting started with SwiftUI at the moment, have a look at my new course to get a project-based introduction for just $12.99. Just use the link in the video description below. If you're interested to learn more about this course, just go ahead and watch the next one and a half minutes. If not, feel free to skip ahead. With SwiftUI, you will build better apps with less code. It makes app development a lot faster, simpler, and even works across all Apple platforms. SwiftUI gives you automatic support for dynamic type, dark mode, localization, and a lot more. I am Brian Edmund, and I've been working as a developer and trainer, especially in the Apple ecosystem, for almost a decade now. This course wants to bring you beyond the standard tutorials of displaying some local or web-based data in a list. It wants to address the questions that arise when creating an app with SwiftUI for the first time and cover topics that will enable you to understand app development with this new toolset and thus make you feel comfortable continue the journey of exploring SwiftUI on your own. I'm going to provide you with all the knowledge you need to create your own SwiftUI apps in no time. In our sample project, we'll build a cool user interface, use UIKit classes like the map view and SwiftUI. We are going to explore the most important property wrappers that are mostly responsible for the reactive magic of SwiftUI. We're also going to create custom shapes, animate them, store data, and so much more. Building this app from start to finish will give you a head start when working on your own projects with SwiftUI. To get the most out of this course, you should have a solid knowledge about Swift 5, and you should also know your way around Xcode. Please feel free to take a look around the course description and have a look at the preview videos. I'd be very happy to see you inside. So this is our starting point. With a little bit of text, we have our toggle button that I use for demonstration purposes. We have our special button. Again, if you'd like to see in detail how this one works and its build, have a look at my last tutorial. There we are going to build that step by step. Um, but the most important aspect here, what I have in content view, are actually my state variables here on top. All of them, uh, all of them are bool variables, um, so that we can actually see um, if our toggle button, for example, here I just use um, a constant for setting this to true. But what I can also do here is add a dollar sign and toggle active, um, and then I can actually change um, if it's activated or not by changing my property right here. And I have to use the dollar sign since we are actually um, getting at the value inside the property wrapper. So that's the reason for that. Um, but now, similarly to our toggle button, we also want to keep our special button active just as I've shown you in the demonstration. And there are several ways to do that and I'm going to show you how this works right now. So in our special button, we do have a property called active. And this property could be used to change everything related to its state. So what we can do is, for example, um, just create an if statement right here in our Z stack, and we're checking if active. So if active is true, what we'd like to do is let's take these two things, our rounded rectangle and our text. If it's active, Let's maybe set the foreground color to our button color instead of the background color. And if our text is active, um, I'd like to change the foreground color or the text color to white. So let's change uh, the, if, uh, the else state real quickly. I'm going to uh, just paste all my code here again. So um, we are currently in the else state. And here I'd like to change my background color or the color of my rounded rect to the background color 
and my text foreground color should be, let's maybe change that here to black. Um, and if we change that to true, our active state, update our canvas on the right, we have the proper, uh, the proper result. Uh, we can also go into our content view and um, also in our button, when we initialize our special button, we also have the active uh, parameter here. I'm going to pass along function active one for the first button and I'm going to pass along function, uh, not function, active and here I'm passing along function uh, to active and um, in our action we're simply going to take these boolean values here and toggle them so that we can turn everything on and off. And if we run this now in the simulator we actually already have exactly the result that we are looking for. So um, if I press on my button we're turning the background to its proper color and since it seems that I'm turning off um, our first button when I'm clicking on function two, we should also change that um, to function two in our second button real quickly. And uh, then this works exactly as we would expect this to work. Um, but if we're having a look at how much redundant code we have here, well, it's not awfully much, but we're doubling the amount of pretty much the identical code for the rounded rectangle and for our text. So what can we do about it? I'd like to show you a more elegant way, a more versatile way, um, so that you can build conditional formatting or conditional modifiers depending on a active state or whatever state you'd like to define. And by doing that, I'm also going to show you how to create your own view modifiers. So something like foreground color, frame, all of that are view modifiers. And if you find yourself constantly attaching the same set of modifiers to a view like a foreground color, um, a corner radius and a padding, then something like that can be useful as well. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit before our preview. And such a view modifier is actually nothing else but another struct. Since we just want to access it within this file, I'm going to define it as private, um, create a struct, I'm going to call it background off. This is the first one that I'm going to create, and this is going to be a view modifier. And such a view modifier requires one function, which is the body function. And here, all we need to do is actually returning um, what we'd like to do with our content. So I can just use my content using a foreground color in my case. And uh, since the background color is, or when our state is false or our active state is false, so my background is offline, so to speak, I'm going to use my background color here as a foreground color for the content. Um, since uh, we only return one thing here in our one expression here in our function, I even do not have to use the return statement. So this is for the background off. So let's maybe comp uh, copy that and create one for the background on. And in that case, we can have different colors. So all I need to do here is maybe give the struct a property, let's call it on color. I'm going to go with a uh, my purple color here or my orange color um, as a default value. And we're going to set the um, color to on color right here. And not on chlor, but on color. Let's quickly refactor that, rename on color, color and rename. And you can see that I'm really just using one modifier here, but it makes a lot of more sense if you're having a lot of modifiers uh, that you'd like to combine and reuse all the time. Um, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do in our particular case with these view modifiers and how else they can be useful even with just this tiny amount um, of modification um, that we're using here. So let's go with the text off. In that case, I'd like to go with a foreground color of the text off black. And if my text is on, I'm going to go with white, so just renaming that real quickly. And here I'm going to go with white. So what I can do now 
um, with these view modifiers ready, um, I can actually use my um, my rounded rectangles. And if um, active is true, going to apply a modifier, going to say background on, and adding some parentheses and for the false state for if our button is not active, I'm going to go with the modifier and my background is off. Now I could do the same thing with my text as well, uh, but I'd like to show you now a very efficient way of conditionally formatting or modifying views in Swift UI. Therefore, we are going to create a new file, new Swift file here, and I'm going to call that conditional modifier. So we're already having this modifier function that allows us to modify something, but not based on a condition. So this is what we are going to implement now ourselves uh, in a generic way. So you can reuse that file all the time. So I'm going to import Swift UI here, and we're going to create an extension for view itself. Um, and now what we are going to do is now creating a public function I'm going to call going to be called conditional conditional modifier. And what it does, it's going to have two modifiers that we can work with, either in a state of true or in a state of false. So we're going to have two modifiers, M1 and M2. Could call that whatever I'd like. Q1, Q2, um, A B, whatever you like. So and in this function. Uh, we're going to deal with a condition. So if the condition, of course, a bool value is true, then we will have to apply a true modifier, which is going to be our M1. And we're also going to deal with a false modifier, which is going to be our M2. And what our function returns is some view where M1 is, of course, a view modifier and M2 also needs to be a view modifier. So this is what we actually want this function to look like. Now we're using the sum keyword here, which means that we have a function with an opaque return type that hides its return values type information. And our function declares its return type as sum view. And as a result, this function returns a value of some given type that conforms to the view protocol. And with that said, what we can do is check if our condition is met. If so, we're using self modifier and we return our true modifier. Else, we're returning our self a false modifier. And all of that, we're going to just pack that into a group that we can work with. So building that with success, um, we now have a generic function that can give us the opportunity to remove a lot of redundant code here. So um, if you're going back into our special button, what we can do now is just get rid actually of almost everything here we're just going to copy uh, or cut one of these pieces. We're going to remove our is statement here, we're just pasting our code that we have, we're going to get rid of our modifier and going to apply our conditional modifier. Our condition that we're working with is active. So if active is true, I'd like this, our background to be on. And if the background is on, we also need to supply it with a color, which is our button color that we have here as a parameter. And if it's false, we're going to go with background off and initialize that here as well. And we can do the same thing with our text. So again, with a conditional modifier, we're going to use the active condition. And if true, text is on. And if false, text is off. This greatly reduces the amount of code that we have to write. And we, it also simplifies the way we're dealing with conditional formatting or modifications of our views in Swift UI. So if I'm running this on my canvas here on the right, 
and also press the play button. Let me do that in the content view. Let's press play here real quickly. Um, what we can do is really what we achieved earlier already, but in a lot more elegant and efficient way. And this is again, highly reusable in many cases of your work with Swift UI. And as you can see, this works just as we would expect this to work. So with conditional modifier, you have a way to efficiently build your user interface based on some conditions. And if you find this useful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any future tutorials. Also check out my Swift UI course in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.